All right, it's finally time to start our High Fleet Hardwood campaign. It's taken a little while to get to this point, but our fleet is ready. We've got our Doctrine, we've got our special builds, and I'm ready to begin. So the first thing we need to do is just make sure we set our toggle to hard difficulty. Designed for those who are already familiar with the game, hard mode from the very beginning throws a player into the thick of battle. Large garrisons and cities, strong strike groups, and difficult repairs. So let's bear that in mind. We don't want to take too much damage. The second thing I want to do is remove the Sevastopol from our selected ship section. We've already got two victory with the Sevastopol. It's time to enjoy not having to take it. So we already built our two um, E warships, the Howler and the Screamer. Check out the bonus video that's coming out with this video to see the design for those. It's very quick and easy. So we're going to grab one of those each. I've named the ships, the actual designs of the ships, with the name I want the ship to be, so it doesn't keep getting reset during the campaign, which kept happening with the Rooster last time, which is why I've got two of these ships showing up here and three of these. Our three interceptor tankers are the Patrick, the Sleepy Pupper, and the Starfish. So let's get all three of those. Next, we need to find our interceptors, which are the Audacity class. We have the Brunswick, the Dzerski, which is, um, I believe, Audacity or Audacious in Russian, and the Rooster 3. And then we need our next ship, which is the Tanaris, or the, yeah, the Tyrannis, sorry, which is our missile carrier carrying five A100s um, as a close-in missile deployer with reasonable speed. And then we also have the Crazy Horse, which is our uh, mobile aircraft carrier, more mobile than our um, main uh, flagship. Next we have our brawler which I've named the Collingwood after a couple of um, requests that came through so that's that ship there and then if we just scroll down the last ship we need is the Frankston which is our, our carrier our battleship our not our battleship it's not a battleship but our, our aircraft carrier flagship. That leaves us with 74,000 cash to start our campaign with, which is a perfect amount of money because whilst I could buy another ship with that, I don't think I need it. I could I could consider, I could take another Collingwood and have two brawlers, which actually isn't too bad an idea. Uh, or the other option is I have plenty of money to start the campaign with just to make sure that we can make the distance. And that's maybe something I want to stick with. The Collingwood, I think, is going to do the work on its own. But let's go. So there's a few little tutorial things that kick off. I'm just going to skip the story here. We already kind of know everything. I'm also going to skip um, Piotr's tutorial. And let's have a look at our starting situation. First, first, let's turn off our radar. Okay, so looking at things here, we've got Kush, Paran, and Nod, kind of our main locations. We also know that there is a Tarkan somewhere to the northwest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split off our three interceptors to take these three cities, and then we'll go from there. Now, the other things to look at is our first objective to take the flagship to, and I want to get it to a refueling city. So the big first flight is going to get them to this city here, which is unnamed. Looking at the map, some other things I want to take into account is the circles around each city denotes the average population. So if a city has a bigger circle, it has a bigger population. It looks like Paran has a bigger population than Kush and Nod. This doesn't directly correlate to the size of the garrison, but seems to relate somehow a little bit. So what we should see is Kush and Nod should have very easy garrisons, and Paran will have a harder garrison. So let's see how that works out. So first things first, I need to grab a fuel ship. Well, we'll grab the Rooster 3, and we're going to team that up with the Starfish. They can take Kush together. Then I'm going to grab the Dzerski and the Sleepy Pupper, and they can take Paran. And then I'm going to grab the Brunswick and the Patrick, and they are need a little bit more fuel to take Nod. I'm actually going to just slightly overfuel them so they've got a bit of wiggle room. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into the supply section in Ur and just see what's available here. So first of all, in the shipworks, um, I don't think there's going to be any special components. No, we've got nothing available for sale here that I want to buy right now, but we may have some supplies that I want. First of all, let's just top up the fuel tanks. There's no reason not to do this in Ur if you've got the cash for it, because the enemy can never detect you in Ur. So this just means that your fleet can sit here, get full fuel, and you don't have to worry about it. Did mean to click exit there. Let's have a look here at what is available. We have 250 kilogram air bomb bombs, aircraft bombs. I just want to buy as many of those as I get my hands on. We also have a 100 millimeter proximity fuse, which is something that I really want. I'm just going to top up on those as well. And there's also a 100 millimeter ammo piercing. I'm going to grab those too. We also have laser guided 180, which is not quite what I want. I want laser guided uh, 130 for later on in the campaign. There are also 350 millimeter aircraft rockets here. So it's going to cost me a lot of money, but I want to top up on those too. So I've already spent a lot of money before the campaign has started, but I've got myself 35 unguided rockets, um, 140 rounds of prox fuse, 154 rounds of armor piercing, and 3250 kilogram bombs. So my fleet is pretty, pretty already loaded out with specialty ammo, which is going to be very important moving forward. Let's get our fleet up in the air and just see how things go. 
I've done a couple of test runs just to make sure that we can get the start of this going okay. And in my last test run, I actually found a strike fleet um, within one jump of the start, which I didn't even think was possible. Maybe it was a bug, I don't know, but it was a bit of a crazy beginning. Sadly, I wasn't recording, I was just making sure everything started okay, so I couldn't keep that recording. But let's see how things are. I'm not going to split the starfishes off from the interceptors, simply because the um, sudden strike probability of these fleets is 99% as is, so there's no real point in, in detaching them. It does mean that if I lose the audacity, I'll lose the tanker, but for now, well, I'll maybe just do that just for safety's sake. So let's just detach the Dzerski from the tanker, um, and that just means if this ship dies, the ship can get out of here. I don't even need to worry about slowing it down too much. We'll do the same when these guys get a bit closer to Kush. The Rooster 3, when it's inside the return speed. So these guys are going to hit fine. So let's see if our theory is correct. We've got a pretty big um, garrison here of Slogger, Ballistic, Courageous, and Asarma. Looking at these ships, we need to identify which ones are the most dangerous to us. And that is instantly going to be the Slogger. The reason the Slogger is the most dangerous is it has two D80 Molots, the 180mm guns, or 130mm guns. These guns can be devastating with prox fuse. The rest of these ships are carrying what I call support weapons. The Sarma has 357mm, which is nothing to ignore. This is still scary, but it is not um, going to shoot prox fuse at us. As long as we just keep don't let it attrition us down, we're going to be okay. The Ballistic, very easy to dodge in a Destiny-style ship. The Courageous has a 37mm gun, I'm not worried. But the Slugger, I am worried about. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take Armor Piercing into this fight, and I'm only going to use the Armor Piercing on the Sarma. Probably don't even need it, to be honest, but I'm going to have it loaded just in case. But we're going to focus the Slugger down first, then the Sarma, then the Courageous, then the Ballistic. Uh, sorry, the Courageous. Ballistic, then Courageous. That's our order. I'm going to be quiet while I fight here as well, because it is um, not easy for me to talk and fight at the same time. That is not the right ship, but that's okay. Let's see if we can shoot down this rocket, or we'll just fire off some flares. There's a the Slugger there. That's what we want to focus down. We don't want to take those Prox Fuse hits like we just did. I might need to restart this fight already. Oh dear, this is this is embarrassing. Let's just, just start this again. You think I haven't played in a while. So we've got our armor piercing ammo, that's fine. So we'll just switch our ammo to normal and we'll get down and find the slugger. We've got a missile coming at us already, which is I think a bit rude. That's probably coming from the slugger, it is. Just launch some flares. Okay, that's the slugger down. Now I'm going to focus on the Sarma. I'm going to switch to armor piercing and just see if we can kill it from below. Try not to take too much 37 millimeter fire. Try to get below it again if we can and try not to overshoot it as well. Get it between us and the enemy so they're not shooting at us. That was a very bad barrage. Unfortunately, we lost the missile, which I really didn't want to do. Okay, that's him down, and now we don't need to worry about using special ammo. Let's get the Courageous next, the, the sorry, the um, Ballistic next, and just try not to use too much more fuel. Just watch out for these missiles coming for us. He's down, and now we just need to deal with the Courageous. I am quite sad that we lost a the missile there, because I was hoping to keep it for a harder garrison. Starting with bad habits and everything. Oh, he's just... There we go. A few too many misses. We took a little bit too much damage. I could actually try redoing this um, and try and save that missile, but I think I'm happy enough with it. Don't lose the morale. Morale's really, really important at the start of a game. The start of a game. So we've got Veteran Governor, Veteran Engineer, Veteran Pilot. Uh, cruising range, maneuverability. I think I want the gun recharge. There's just a little tutorial on saving survivors, which I do want to look at doing because I don't want to lose the um, I don't want to lose the morale for it. But securing the fuel tanks here is probably more important. Um, so we'll just get the fuel, and we'll go from there. Let's just see how the rest of our fleets are doing. So Kush team can now detach. I think almost we're good to go here, and these guys are a little bit away. So let's just see what happens when we take Kush. This should be a much easier garrison than Paran. Uh, I would like to try and save the survivors, but I need protection to do that. The problem here is it's a bit of a catch-22, because if I try to take the survivors without getting crew protection, I will both save morale and lose morale, potentially, 
if I take the put the protection on, then I'm most likely not going to get time to save the survivors. So I think I need to roll the dice and try and save the survivors, um, and then I'll search the crew, car the crew quarters afterwards. It's not a great choice I've been given here. So here we go. We've got a slogger, an intrepid, and a courageous. This is actually quite a dangerous garrison because both the slogger and the intrepid have the 180 millimeter ammo. Slogger we kill from the bottom. Um, and Trevor we can kill from the top or the bottom because of the fuel tanks, Courageous I'm not too worried about. So I might have to redo this a couple of times, but we'll see how we go. Slugger is still our primary. Although we've got the Intrepid, it looks like, as an opening target here. Oh, I did not mean to launch that missile, but I launched it, so... It's just, it, it got distracted by my own flares. Amazing. I'm focusing on the Intrepid just because it was our first target available to us. Add some dead. What shall we go fly to that? And just the courageous left. So we're, we're definitely running into a pattern here where we are losing a missile for no reason in each, each garrison attack, which I'm really happy with. Um, I just hit spacebar instead of after launch flares, which is just a really dumb thing to do. We've got a D-80 Molot here. We do not have to worry about any, um, any enemies to save. So let's get the fuel tanks, so we'll get the Molot, maybe get the captain's cabin if we have time. That's two towns taken already. Uh, these guys are still refueling or filling up with fuel. The, and I think it kind of fits. That was a much easier garrison than the one at Paran. Let's oop, get this fleet. We actually managed to rescue the people without a negative effect. That was unbelievable luck. Um, so no morale loss there. Well, let's see. We don't want to set the patch. We want to set the Brunswick in. We'll do that in just a second. Uh, we've got the fuel. Oh, there's so much going on. It's exciting. So you guys can now grab the... Now the mullet has a chance for danger. So let's just get the, the uh, crew protection because we don't need to worry about it. Um, and let's get the Brunswick on its way, and I just want to monitor this, because if we're going to lose a D-80 Molot, I will switch over. One of the things the patch has done is it's flipped the... Oh, we've got a bronze icon, cool. Uh, these guys can now come into town. Just going to keep juggling all these plates. I'm going to land the Dzeski and just see if we can get that repaired. Looks like we can buy some friends here, which we're probably not going to do, because the, Alex, the vanilla ships are just not really worth it. I'm a bit sad about how much damage this ship took, actually. I wish I hadn't let it take as much damage, because it is going to take a little bit of time to, sadly, get repaired. Um, there is a Wasp there, which is nice to see. It's a good ship, but we've got enough aircraft carriers, I think. Just wait for these guys to touch down. Nice to all. Not a lot of flex in those legs. Okay, we've got a 29% repair bonus, which is good, because we're probably going to need it. Do we have an event? Disaster. As you arrive in the city, you see an enormous black chasm yawning in its very center, the aftermath of a fuel depot explosion. Half the city around the crater lies in ruins, with countless dead buried beneath the rubble. The Doyen begs you to help with the rescue effort. Many people have been buried alive. He needs your ships and machines for two days. The northern fuel depot is gone, he pleads, but there are 6,000 tons of methane left in the southern depot. It'll all be yours, Grand Duke, if you agree to help us in our hour of need. Um... You ask too much. I cannot stay here for two full days. I understand since the Duncast Island, but the Almighty has left us with no other choice. If you don't help us, many people, I can't afford to spend this time. Unfortunately, as much as I would love to save the civilians, we cannot let the enemy find out where we are. So we lost three kindness for that. But we can't afford to be kind when we're engaging in a war. Let's see how much the repairs are going to cost. They're going to be very expensive. Uh, they're going to cost 15. They're going to take 18 hours. We'll just get that ongoing. Um, check for supplies. We don't, can't buy any fuel. We've got 180mm guided. We've got more prox fuse. I don't think I need to buy any prox fuse yet. Um, how much will it cost me just to top up? Yeah, let's get the prox fuse. We're spending a lot of money right now, and I'm very aware of that. Um, we're going to fill up on fuel here, which is great. Uh, we've got another fight about to start. The idea is these guys are just going to sit here until we can take the fuel depot up here. Um, we've got another rescue order here. What's left? Oh, the Molot. I've got, I wasn't paying attention to that, so I'm glad that the game didn't screw me over. And we're about to take Nod, which should be another easy garrison. Yeah, I already see two Courageouses. Two, three Courageouses and a Navarin. This is a Navarin Mark I. You basically never see these. Um, it has no armor and it has 57mm guns. We don't need any special ammo for this. We'll just try and deal with it as quickly as possible and we'll try not to lose our missiles. And that was some bad opening fire.
Those huge explosions are the 1,000... Oh, damn. We lost the missile. <sighs> Can I afford to just try this fight again and not lose the missile? Is it worth it? I'm flying badly because I'm dead. I'm going to try one more time. I don't want to lose this missile. Let's just try one more time. Those huge explosions are the 1,000 ton bombs that Courageous have strapped to the bottom of them going off. It's pretty impressive. That barrage would have hit if it wasn't for the dead Courageous in the way. on the left, how much damage is taken. Come on, shots. He's down. Sometimes Courageous is so hard to hit. There we go. Right, we didn't lose a missile that time. We took very minimal damage. I'm happy with that result. And that's three towns taken already. Alright, uh, what have we got here? We've got 2837, we've got fuel tanks, ammo, crew cabins, captain's cabin. I would really like to search the captain's cabin, the crew cabin. I'm not too worried about this. We've obviously got the fuel tanks and the ammo to worry about. We could do fuel tanks, captain's cabin, and then possibly the ammo in the crew cabins. Let's see how that goes. All right. Interesting. We've got IRST incoming from Mari. There's a very high chance that that is going to be a trade fleet on the way here. There's no way the enemy know that we're here yet. So there's probably a trade fleet on the way in, um, which I would love to find. But at the moment, we don't have much in the way of fuel. So uh, we can't go and chase them, and we can't go into the town either to grab any fuel to go and chase them with. So we're kind of stuck. I'm not going to bother landing the Rooster 3. It did exemplary in that fight. Uh, supplies. We're looking for 130 millimeter um, laser guided, which you don't have any yet. We don't need don't want 130 millimeter armor piercing. Probably need to think about it, but I'm not going to leave it for now. We've got anti-aircraft missiles, which I do want. I'll probably take 10 of those. I'm going to start being a bit more cautious with what I'm buying. Any cool components for, for sale here? Armor, fuel tanks, engines, no, nothing here. Okay, um, in that case, once you guys have finished refueling, which you've already done, you can move on to Nagar. Um, you are, no, you're not, full, you're not fully fueled yet. You are fully fueled, okay. In that case, on you go to Nagar. You guys have almost finished rescuing. So you've got the fuel now, which is really cool. Let's get the captain's cabin on the go. Um, how's that IRST set? It's getting further away. So it's possible they're on the way to Mari, which is fine. We can send them to we can send them on to Mari once they're ready to go. This is the only downside is these guys are going to sit and repair for a while. What I could do is I could leapfrog this few this fleet onto Kush because it is a a, a a place to get refueling done, and then they can jump up from Kush to this unnamed town here. Uh, intercepted enemy communications mentioned Tarkin ships far northeast of City Nod use Kosha when navigating area. So there's a Tarkan probably in Kila. So let's just mark that as there's um, Tark any nod. Uh, just so that I know that if I don't get this, I know what to look for. Um, let's just unpause. Let's just check our rescue orders, actually. So we'll secure the ammunition next and then see if we've got time to check the crew quarters. This fleet is almost at Nagar already. In the one hour out, so I'll pause the game and we'll get ready to send the rooster on. Okay, he's been dispatched. Uh, what have we got still available here? Crew cabins, perfect, get some valuables. Um, 
nothing on IRST now, which means that the ship that we detected has gone further away, so it is on its way to Mari, that's fine. If it is a trade fleet, it's going to be slow enough that by the time we get to Mari, we'll find them, so I'm not too worried. We're about to get our fight at Nagar, which is great, and this fleet's almost finished refueling, which means I can get them onto Kush. We found a Gilded Dagger, I'm very happy with that. Let's just quickly check how things are looking in this town. Um, I will quickly, uh, I don't think I need to land the Brunswick because I do want to get it on the road as quickly as possible. What have we got available for sale here? We've got 180mm laser guided again, but no 130mm laser guided. More 250 kilogram aircraft bombs. These are super important to our fleet. Uh, just quickly check the ship works. I think there's missiles for sale here. We've got T7s and A100s here, as well as Zeniths. Um, that is great, a great find. So what we'll do is we will mark this location as a missile and plane hub and then we will dispatch i think we've got the range for it we'll take we'll send the screamer over um and this is the screamer with a 60 this is the, the how far the screamer can go at, a full, at its full fuel it's i'm pretty impressed with it we'll just send it with just enough fuel to get here and it is going to refuel here and act as a courier um it could take one hour to cross that distance which is nuts um, these guys are ready to go. They are a bit more badly damaged than I thought they were. How long is it going to take to repair the Brunswick? Uh, ship works. If I just repair it in the air, it's going to take seven hours. If I get it on the ground, there's 28 repair zone there. We'll land it in that. That 57 millimeter and that 37 millimeter just, just do a lot of attrition damage. Are we going to fit in this hole? This might be quite tight. We can fit in here. Oops. Don't hit that missile. Oh. The thrust is too high that it's actually over responding to my inputs. Touchdown confirmed. Okay, we made it down without too much damage. Uh, so it's gone from 7.5 hours to 7.5 hours. Interesting. Okay, we'll just leave it at that then. It must have done extra damage landing it. We'll just let it repair. I'm pretty happy to do that. Let's see how this combat goes in the guy. Okay, we now have Elant detected. Elant 1 directly north. So let's have a look. It's this ship here that's detecting it. Uh, we've got a 1,500 kilometer range, so I'm just gonna draw a line out like that. Now, Elan's funny. It's not gonna be exactly that. There's a very good chance that our target is here. So let's just draw a 1,500 kilometer bubble like this. So um, I think I think we've maybe got either a strike fleet slash um, prize fleet radar. So that's what we're picking up from here. Let's just see how that matures. Ooh, this is a big garrison. So what have we got? We've got Sarma, Courageous, Slogger, Courageous, Courageous, Courageous. So really, again, the Slogger is our biggest issue. We also have to deal with the Sarma. I think I can go in with standard ammo and take this on. Lots of Courageouses. The only thing I have to watch out for is fuel in this fight. I have to use as little fuel as possible. I'm actually going to use a missile on the Sarma here. I'm going to try and find this the slugger and use a missile on it as well. I don't have another missile for the slugger, of course. That's the slugger now. Let's try and focus the slugger down now. Really have to make my shots matter in this fight. Okay, that's a Sarma down. Now we should deal with the Courageouses as quickly as possible. Getting that bomb is a great way to deal with them. Okay, two Courageouses left. Oop, took a bit of a big pop there. Can you not with a 37mm? Oh, look at him dropping his bomb on me. So cheeky. I think he's gonna crash. Let's focus on this one. Cool. 
That's all three of them destroyed. We still had 60% fuel as well, so I think I did really well there. Took a bit of damage, but I think it's unavoidable dealing with that many enemies. As long as it's superficial, we're not losing any major components, I'm pretty happy. Rooster 3 just hit level 2. Let's get Ever Ready. It is a pretty good perk. Um, I think Royal Guard was there, though, which is a better perk, and I should have taken that. So I want to get the fuel tanks. We've got ammo. Search for survivors is important as well. We can probably do fuel tanks, search for survivors. There is this 2 day 37. I'm missing out lots of opportunities to make money at the moment, but I think I'm okay. We should keep an eye on this Elin Sensor ready to put up. Now, this guy's now is saying he doesn't have enough fuel to make it to Nod, but he clearly has enough fuel to make it to Nod. So we'll see what happens there. If I lose him, I'll be pretty annoyed. He is really shifting. Got the fuel. Let's search for survivors. Elint is now at 30, which further increases my theory that they are here at uh, this city. These guys have finished refueling, or have they? No, they've still got a little bit of fuel to pick up. Not too much, though. Um, let's see if we can rescue anybody. Rescue two people. Amazing. Uh, we've lost the ability now to rescue the gun, but we'll get the ammo. You might pick up some laser-guided ammo doing that. Let's just see what's going to happen here. The game seems to think they're not going to have enough fuel. Um, I might just, for safety's sake, send the Patrick to intercept. Let's not take any risks. Just to make sure they've definitely got enough fuel to make it. That's the ammo sorted. I don't think there's anything left to uh, recover here. So let's see if there's any events. Uh, we're going to land the rooster. It needs repairs. Uh, we've got a... Ooh, we're not great choices. We'll land in that 18. Liking the audacities. They're really fun to fly. Um, I know they're just basically a slightly pimped up lightning, but that's fine. Just watch we don't crash. If you didn't know, you can use Q and E to rotate your ship. It's actually something I want to investigate in combat. Um, but it also means you can try and just straighten your ship up when you're coming in for a landing in an awkward landing spot like this. You can tell I'm not trusting the legs enough to come down heavily. I've got to really gently land the ship, which definitely makes it feel like a little bit of a design flaw. Uh, okay, what have we got for sale here? Just out of numbers. We've got a tanker, which is actually one of the best vanilla designs. We've got a Yars, and we've got, there's a Tarkan here in a Gepard. There's also a Triumphant and a Paladin Mark II. All right, let's just quickly check how long it's going to take to repair the 17.5 hours. It's only going to cost five, though. We've got a DD Mort, which is great. Um, and I think if we've got a Tarkan here, this is an interesting spot. Um, I don't really want to deal with a Tarkan right now. What I think we're going to do is we will deal with that in the next video. I think I've covered enough for my opening video. We've taken four territories already. Our fleet's about to move on. We haven't been detected by the enemy. We've taken a little bit of damage. I want to see what people think so far. So I'm going to leave it there. But thank you so much for watching. And I hope to catch you in the next video where we continue our hardwood campaign. Ciao.